Have you ever wondered why group action at the people power scale is rare? Despite the fact that the problems large numbers of people protest about have been around for a very long time. Let's simplify things a bit to see if we can understand this puzzle better. Imagine there is a five-story condominium with one family living on each floor. Alex and his family, Bob, Charlie, David, and Edward with their families. The building has a single little red elevator. That's me, and I've been broken for some time now, and here's why. I was built many years ago and was designed to lift only two people at a time. But residents, too lazy to climb up the stairs or wait for their turn, often packed me with more people than I was made to carry. No surprise, I broke down. Charlie, Dave, and Edward were keen on having me repaired. Alex and Bob were also keen to get me repaired, since they used the rooftop terrace frequently for evening tea and cocktails. However, they thought that Charlie, Dave, and Edward would ante up the funds, since they needed to climb more steps to get to their floors. Charlie, Dave, and Edward approached Bob and Alex, but the latter told them that they didn't really need the elevator, so they would have to cover the full cost. Charlie agreed, but argued that Dave and Edward should pay more, since they live on upper floors and have more need of my services. Edward refused, because while he would have shouldered a relatively large portion of the cost, Charlie's family uses me a lot more than his, so Dave refused as well. So, I remained broken for months, because the five were unable to take collective action. Collective action problems occur when the incentives and motivations of individuals run counter to what is good for the group. I broke down because I was overworked. The incentive to free ride also constrained collective action. Free riding occurs when someone can use a shared commodity, or what economists call a public good, without having to pay for it. It's a common phenomenon that plagues collective action. Anyway, back to my story. After months of climbing up and down stairs, Charlie, Dave, and Edward agreed to cover the cost of the repair in equal shares and to use me properly. A special lock was installed with keys kept only by the three to keep Alex and Bob from free riding. But then one day, Dave forgot his key in the house and suggested that one key be kept with the guard for future mishaps. For about a month, things worked out nicely until the guard, who can barely make ends meet, figured he could earn a little side money by letting Alex and Bob use me to go up to the terrace. So, with this little side deal, Alex and Bob also started to use me. Six months later, I broke down again. Charlie, Dave, and Edward were shocked. The three simply refused to pay for the repairs. Corruption on the part of the guard, Alex and Bob, and the lack of awareness on the part of the others had led to a breakdown for me and a continuing state of needless inconvenience for everyone. This lack of awareness of the three is often referred to as an asymmetry of information between them and the guard, Alex and Bob. If the three had found out about the side deal, they could have confronted Alex and Bob in the guard and find some resolution to get Alex and Bob to contribute to the cost of the repairs. Asymmetry of information can often contribute to the lack of collective action. Alex, Bob, Charlie, Dave, and Edward have had real difficulties in collaborating to solve the red elevator problem. Imagine the challenges and constraints to collective action that a leadership team faces when asked to design and implement a challenging reform. For instance, reform of their country's highly dysfunctional public procurement system.